Hey, Christine, are you going to be the one for DPHHS doing the talking about the timing of the claims? Yes, I can. I can share that. So Megan and I had discussed that. So we, we can both answer questions on it and I can share um, the most recent timeline. Okay. Okay. Well, and I thought you guys were going to talk a little bit too about the additional reports that might be coming available. Is that right? Remember, we were having some of those schools that were discussing that. Um, Remember to do the reconciliations for the the payments actually going through. Like the remember the timing of the claim submission. Like there was some of them that were pre July, then July to September, then October post. Oh, yeah. certainly, yeah. And and yeah. Megan can can answer some of those questions as well. Okay, but I might have if you guys don't mind if you guys can kind of just address that a little bit. That some schools have reached out and asked about that. That would be good. I think that'd be good useful information. Okay. Thank you. Check your phone. Okay. So good morning, everybody. I'm just going to give it a few more minutes because I see that we don't have as many as I would anticipate. So I just want to give folks some time to get logged in before we get started. So be just a few more minutes. Okay, guys. Well, I think I'm going to go ahead and get started, um, just in fairness of everybody else's time here. So um, good morning. 
Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Jay Phillips, and I'm the Chief Financial Officer here at the Office of Public Construction. And um, we also have some of our DPHHS partners here as well. Looks like we've got Christine White as well as Megan Peel here. Megan, is that all that's coming? Is just you and Christine today? Um, I think Katie Harlow is joining us. She might not be a panelist, but but I think Christine and I are the ones that are going to be okay. speaking. So okay. thank you guys for coming as well. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and get started again. So everybody, thank you for coming and taking time to meet with us again. Um, should be a pretty quick discussion today. I just want to give you guys a couple updates on um, the IGT process. Um, you know, last month we were able to successfully go ahead and receive and process and submit or release claims for those schools that choose to participate in the process. Um, I think overall it went pretty good. Um, I think a lot of the actual hard work about kind of in the back end of things was DPHHS and OPI scrambling a little bit to make sure that we got everything done, but um, did a really good job. And I thank you to thank a big thanks to DPHHS and um, their team for uh, making the process be most smoothly. And so just a, a reminder that for the next month, you know, of course, for the um, March, or I'm sorry, the um, March claims that we're going to be doing in March for the February claims, that that is still going to be the same process that we did this month, um, that where the Office of Public Construction will send out a notification to each one of the CSET districts notifying them of what their match amount is for claims that have been submitted. Um, and again, it'll be that same document that we submitted, which was just that match certification form that you can use to take to your board and have your or your authorized rep and have that signed and submitted. Uh, so then you can uh, get that approved, send it into OPI so that we can uh, release the claim or notify DPHHS to release the claims for payment. And so that is going to be the same process. Um, starting in April, though, as I've been talking about in the past, that OPI is working on implementing a new system called Access Gov. And so what we'll be doing there is that rather than the, the CSET districts receiving an email from my staff, that actually there will be a portal where you can go in there using your MPI number. You can log in and you'll be able to see um, what claim um, requirements you have for that month. Um, it will also be something in the system that it will show up for previous months. And so if for some reason, there's a timing issue of you meeting with your board that you did not uh, were able to participate in the IGT process for um, that month, then it will reflect several months worth of claims in there, but it will break them out separately. Um, part of the reason why we're doing that is that in our communications back and forth between OPI and DPHHS is that we need the ability need to have the ability to identify each claims month so we know what we're actually releasing and what we're informing dphhs is uh, approved and that we've received that match payment um, we will be sending out another notification to all the schools as a reminder that throughout the month of march we're going to have two actual training sessions and then we'll also have two days of where we have open what we call office hours where um, school districts can log in at any time throughout the day and there will be an OPI staff member there available to answer any questions and then to give you an actual demonstration if needed of the access gov system and the the uh, staff member here at OPI that's going to be help lead that up her name is Becky Belling she's one of my accountants here at OPI and she's been helping out and been working with uh, Montana Interactive to get that access gov portal um, set up and so as we move forward um, she'll be the one that you guys will be really working with and for the training and questions with that access gov system so um, again, I, we'll be sending out a notification of those dates and links uh, to where you guys can actually access that. Um, if in the interim, uh, you know, during the IGT process, like this last time, if anybody has, you know, timing issues, you know, the one thing I think that we did great partnering with the districts is that for those that had board meetings that conflicted potentially with that 10 day window that we've got scheduled, um, you guys did a great job of notifying us that you guys had the CSET form approved by your board. Um, and you guys were going to be submitting the, the payment to us. And just a reminder that if there is a timing constraint, if before that deadline date, um, you do notify OPI that that form is coming and you can send us a scanned version of that, then we will go ahead and notify DPHHS that that money is coming, your match payment is coming into us, and we will release, set that for release um, in working with DPHHS. Um, with that said, along that's just as long as it meets all of the requirements of what Department of Public Health and Human Services needs for their verification process. So, um, so we can talk about that a little later if you guys have questions on that in the Q and A portion of the meeting. 
And then I do want to turn it over to DPHHS a little bit because um, this first round, you know, was I think it was a great exercise. We did have quite a few questions around the actual timing of when claims were submitted and what requirements are kind of around there. Um, I know that there was there's different um, requirements for claims that are submitted from July through September and then, of course, that October to current date. And so I will let Megan and Christine address that. So I'm going to turn it over to you guys, Megan. Yeah, thank you, Jay. Um, Christine, do you want to pull up the um, the timeline and kind of walk through that? Sure. Okay. All right. Is everybody able to see my screen? Okay. So I have uh, clean this up a little bit, um, taking out some things that um, are not relevant for school districts or the mental health center. So it's a little easier to follow. Um, just want to start off by saying that the, the, when I say the, the claims for that month, those are claims that are pending are based on when a clean claim is received. So it's not based on date of service. So if a child receives CSCT in February, that would be different than when the clean claim is received. So just kind of some clarification on that. Um, I've added that sentence in there. So for our uh, current claims that we're gonna be processing this coming month in March, uh, claims can be submitted between, so already started uh, January 6th, 26th through February 22nd. Um, they can be submitted throughout this reporting period. There's no specific guidance on um, when mental health centers or school districts choose to submit. Um, that's at their discretion. Um, the state match report, we've run that and that will be sent over to the OPI so that they can start getting emails out to you um, by March 1st, uh, tomorrow that's when they'll start notifying you if your match amount. Then there's that 10 day window starting March 1st through March 15th, where you will be uh, sending in your payment for your match amount. Also note that in order for payments to be released, a reimbursement to be released, we need the updated MOU signed. So for anybody on the call that has not sent that in, uh, that's a CMS requirement. So along with the, the state match, we do need the MOU. Uh, then the OPI will notify uh, Children's Mental Health Bureau by March 15th, that's a Tuesday, and that's the day that I'll release the claims that have met the match and the MOU requirement, and I'll upload uh, the data file to MMIS based on the, the NPIs that are to be paid. That's on the 15th. Claims process on Wednesdays. It's always the third Wednesday for the IGT process. And then they will pay on Monday, March 21st. So any questions about that process? I can also touch on remittance advice and how to look at your remittance advice um, and see which claims are pending uh, for the IGT process, what the the remark code that you'll see on your remittance advice so you can, can track if, if you're interested. Christine. Oops, yes. This is Heather from Target Range and perhaps this is a dumb question and you've already answered it in previous things, but how can we submit claims for the month of February when we haven't even gotten through the month of February? This is so it's it's based on when claims are submitted and so when I, I i probably need to update my my chart here so when i say february because it goes through february 22nd so we're calling it the claims february but maybe i should should reword that to say submitted because it's not based on date of service gotcha thank you yeah yeah so yeah i i caught that last week and i just didn't have a chance to update this yet because i thought well maybe that is a little confusing to say February claims when it really should say claims submitted during this time period. Yeah, Christine, I, I just personally, I mean, I think it'd be good if you could walk through that remittance advice a little bit. So just because I know that we got quite a few questions on that during this first round. 
Sure. Yeah, let me stop sharing this and I'll share that document as well. And I'm in the process of working on some guidance uh, that we're finalizing um, around this. And so I will get that out um, as soon as we've taken one last look at it. Let me go ahead and share. Right, yeah, everybody can see that. So yeah, we have received a number of questions uh, around remittance advices. So when you're looking for things that are part of the IGT process for claims, you'll notice it says claims pending. That means it's a clean claim, it's ready to pay as soon as the match is met. And you'll notice the reason code, which is 133. And I put the explanation for it. it it's um, the most important thing that you need to note on this is that it's pending further review. When we say review, that means the match. So it, that's uh, the definition for that reason code. You'll can also you notice that. Can, hmm? you, can you make the screen bigger? Because part of sure. it's cut off. If you can sure. just enlarge that document. Sure. Is that more clear? It's still, at least my screen, it still like kind of shows like it's minimized or something. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's what? just showing. Is it a, a full screen on yours? Oh. Did it? Yeah. That's wow. a little bit bigger, but it's just not showing the entire document. Okay, let me stop sharing for a minute. Is that showing just the document now? Is that better? I'm not. No, I'm doing the other side. <laughs> Is that better? Oh, there, there, that's better. Okay, okay. Sorry about that. Um, I've got like multiple screens and my like cameras on my laptop. So trying to juggle all that. I think we all are very familiar with this world. Um, so again, you'll, you'll notice on your remittance advice, it says claims pending. It'll show you the ICN, which is the, the claim number. It'll show you the team in your school district that is associated with that particular claim. Um, the procedure code, so there's two codes for CCT. So H0036 is the one you're most likely gonna see. It'll show you the total charges, which is $96, which is the, the daily rate. And then the reason code why it's pending. And, the 133 means it's an IGT claim that's pending. So this um, scrolling down, um, you know, when you get your report from the OPI, it'll show you the provider treating ID. This is uh, the team number, and then you, the total cost for that particular team. Now I know the questions I've been receiving is like, well, why does what I see maybe on my remittance advice doesn't match what the, what the report from the OPI says. So if you have any claims that have had to be adjusted, you'll notice, and this is the, at the bottom here, you'll notice the, it'll show up as paid as a negative, which means it's a take back. So if there was an error in it, um, so the $35 and 34 cents with the negative, is, is showing, it, it says paid, but it's paid in the negative, if that makes sense. So you'll have to subtract those off of your um, amount. So if, if you're wondering why things don't quite match up. You'll also probably start seeing on your remittance advice paid claims. So those would be previous IGT or other claims that have already paid, and then you'll see your pending amounts. Um, I believe the remittance advices only come out on Mondays. So if things haven't been put into the system and there's, or they're still being processed because we process all claims to look for any errors in the claim before it goes to pending. So if it's a duplicate or if there's something else that needs to be addressed on the claim, that's done first before it enters pending. Once it enters pending, it's a clean claim and it's payable if the match is met. 
Um, we're also recommending that if you are still using the Conduit Math Portal to look at your remittance advices, that you begin your transition over to the Optum Empath Portal um, as, as we're in the process of transitioning over. Um, and my uh, guidance here will address that as well on how to do that, how to access the, the Optum Portal to look at your remittance advices. Currently, you can still see them. On, on the map portal. Any questions about looking at your remittance advice, what to look for? So Christine, we got a couple questions in the chat box. Um, mm -hmm. Kelly was asking, I got the OPI report info, but no remittance advice for January. Can I still get one? Do I go print it somewhere? Yes, you can definitely still access it. You can go to the math portal or if you've already switched over to the Optum portal and um, created your account with your Gov ID. Um, you can view it there. I also, I'm sorry to scroll so fast. Um, this is what the Optum portal looks like. And I do, I can provide information on um, contacting Conduit to, to get your remittance advice. You can either go to the portal or call them and then they can, email it to you via secure file transfer. Ken, I think you touched on part of this one. This one is from Cassie. Where can we get the RAs for the claims prior to them being paid? And is my understanding that the RAs are not available to our providers until the matches have been paid? They should be available because they'll show as pending. So you'll be able to see, so you might have to scroll down on your remittance advice to see those because I think the paids might be at the top. Um, and then you'll just have to scroll down and look for the pending. So look for the word pending, look for the procedure code for CSCT and look for the 133 remark code. And those will show you what's pending. You can, if you don't see anything at all, I would contact your mental health center to see how they're submitting claims. If they're doing it weekly, or if they're waiting to the end of the month to submit. Because like I said, we don't give any guidance on how their billing department handles claims. Um, let's see, I think that was the last one. Any other questions for uh, Christine or Megan? Looks like we got one other one here. Oh wait, I'm sorry, Christy, that was from you. Yeah, that was me. If if somebody's using the, the old portal, the conduit portal, the math portal, Montana access to health. Okay. Okay, Megan, Christine, anything else? Nope. I'm good, but feel free to send me any questions at, you know after the call if, if you want some clarification. Um, I'd be happy to answer. Thanks. And then, Christine, I guess, Megan, we can actually, OPI can post this on our website, too. So there's a couple of places to get it. If you want, we can post that out on our website as well. So, Sure. Okay. And, yeah, and I'll also send you the updated timeline, and that can be posted as well. Okay, great. Okay. <clears throat> okay, thank you, guys. So next on the agenda, um, new FAQ. This, this is really just more of an um, update. The OPI and DPHHS are actually in the process right now. We've got a couple of changes or revisions to the FAQ that we are finalizing. Um, I was hoping that we'd have that to you guys and available today, but unfortunately there's um, one more thing our chief legal here at OPI is reviewing and then we'll, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, work at DPHHS on that and then get that new one posted. Uh, once we have that available, we'll send out a notification and let everybody know that there is an updated FAQ out there for your consideration. And then just real quick, um, I brought Becky Belling into it so you could at least put a, a name to the face. And uh, so Becky, again, she's one of my accountants and she's been helping out in leading the CSCT process here um, at OPI. And she's gonna be one of the ones that's, or she will be the one that's gonna be doing the trainings for the access gov system itself. Um, but she will also be your point of contact and we'll make sure that we send out with our notifications her contact information so that in the event you do have questions or concerns or even issues um, as we roll that out then you can reach out to her so good morning becky and thank you good morning <laughs> <laughs> right. Great. 
Okay, so um, that's the only things that we really had on the agenda. So at this time, I will open it up if there's um, anybody who has questions in regards to the, you know, the uh, IGT process that we've talked about today or the remiss advice or anything that DPHHS talked about or just in general, um, I'm opening it to the floor to you. I don't see any, so, okay. Well, if nobody has questions, um, I appreciate everybody's time. Again, thank you for coming and um, meeting with us. Um, again, as we start to move, oh, somebody does have their hand up. Sorry, did I miss that? Let's see here. I don't, sorry guys, let me see here. Jay, I think it's one of the attendees. Oh, okay. Oh, Jerry's out there. Hold on here. Jerry, I just promoted you to um, a panelist, so you should be able to, you should pop in here with us here in just a second. There we go. So if you, there you go. Okay. There we go. I had put in the chat, and I thought, well, if I didn't catch it, maybe somebody else didn't. What is the planned date for the start of using Access Gov? Yeah, thanks, Dre, for the for the um, the question. So I did put it in the chat, but I'll um, reiterate that. So April first is when we'll start with the new system itself. Um, that will be again the first time that schools will have the ability to log into the system and get that certification form. It will look similar to what you've been getting via email, um, but again, it'll be just be a different portal. Um, and like I had conveyed earlier, the nice thing about this is, is that if a, if a school has, let's say, January claims that they did not submit for reimbursement, but then they also have February, they'll be able to go out there, you will be able to go out there and see both of those pieces. It'll be individual um, certification forms for each one. And so you'll also have the option that you can choose to just pay January's um, and not February's, and that February will stay out there. So the next time you log in there. Um, I don't want to give too much, but the system itself, too, will also give you the capability that if you can, you can do an electronic check versus do it a mail-in, but you'll still have that mail-in option as well. Um, throughout the month, again, there'll be two office hours that will hold where Becky will be available um, to answer questions. People can pop in and out at their, at their uh, leisure um, to, like, see what the system's functionality is or if they have questions. And then we will hold two actual Zoom actual trainings where... Becky will walk everybody through the system, but then also a Q&A as well. And so we'll send out a communication on that, Jerry, um, okay. just as a reminder. So, Thank you. Okay. I don't see anything else in the chat. I don't see anybody else's hands up. Oh, there's one. Hold on. Oh, that was Jerry's. Okay. Okay, guys. Well, again, I appreciate everybody taking the time to come meet with us. And again, at any time you guys have questions, feel free to reach out to myself. Um, Becky's also a great resource. Um, if you have questions or anything, have questions about the new system coming up or just in general, she's also a great resource. And so I want to say thank you, everybody, and have a great week and uh, enjoy the nice weather. Thank you. <laughs>